Hi, I'm back, and we're going to talk about chapter 13 and chapter 14 of Isaiah today. And I, I really um, am a pre-trib person, and I haven't really studied. You know, some people were, believe we're going to be raptured before um, before these these things happen in the earth. Some people believe we're going to go through tribulation. And we're going to halfway through, three and a half years through the this terrible time that we're going to be. Then we're going to be raptured. And then some people believe that at uh, the end we'll be all raptured. So um, I like to, I think I want to go on the on the first load. And uh, But we will see what we will see. So um, uh, God has the plan and his grace and his empowerment in our lives for the the, the testings and the situations that are going to come upon the earth because the Lord has says they're going to come upon the earth. He is, there is a grace and an empowerment in our lives that we don't have to be in fear. We can be in faith because it does, there's in another passage in Isaiah 60, it says, uh, say to the wicked, woe, but say to the, the righteous, fear not. So us that are righteous and in him, we should not be afraid. We should be in confidence. But he will tell us things that are going to happen because, in, in, in fact, there is going to be a judgment of the evil that is happening. And, 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 but remember, as his people, that we are the salt. We are, and salt, one of the things that salt is, is a preservative. That he has us as a preservative. There will be a day when the Holy Spirit is removed from the earth. So those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them, they will actually be ca caught away and then really havoc. So, you know, you think like in cities that you might be in or, or neighborhoods that you live in, that there's a lot of evil going on, but I just want you to know you are preserving things that could be worse. And you've got to have a confidence as you pray in the spirit that God is moving. Even when you don't see things changing naturally, you've got to take your authority, the blood of Jesus and rebuke those spirits that are in operation and you continue by faith to declare and decree over your neighborhood. You walk and you pray and, and you don't have to let everybody hear it and let everybody see it, but you do that by faith. Amen. You must believe because the Bible said he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, but he only respects faith. So if you're praying and you're not praying in faith, you're wasting your breath. You have to be actively believing when you pray. Amen. When you pray, you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you've got to be praying in faith. Amen. It does, so uh, don't get in a prayer group if you're not in engaged a, as a, a and have a fervency over that situation. Better to wait for what God wants you to pray and know that you're praying uh, aligned with what God. See, everybody's on the wall praying in different places for different purposes, and everybody's prayers matter to God. Amen. But there's certain things that He's calling you to pray about in your sphere of influence and that I might not be praying about. And it doesn't mean that I can't come and agree with you in prayer, but you have the mantle, you have the anointing, you have a... a, a, a uh, uh, a, uh, a, a, a heartfelt, fervent prayer because of situations, perhaps that God's moved upon you to have that, uh, the spirit, uh, uh, that spirit of intercession has come on you to pray the perfect will over given situations. So not all prayers are, I, I don't believe are counted equal. There is a heartfelt, fervent prayer that when you pray in a particular, and so uh, again, in, in, in the area of prayer, if you're not feeling it, if you're not, if your heart is not in it, then get over to where your heart is and pray that end and, and find that vein in prayer and stay with it. Amen. Because God wants you to pray and be the answer in a particular situation. So I, I appreciate prayer groups and I have, we have prayer, um, 
prayer group, you know, that I, people that I get with. But what I want and what we pray when we do pray is we want to find what God wants us to pray for that day. Amen. And so we're going to talk here for a few minutes. It says um, th there's a burden of Babylon, which which Isaiah had the son of Amos, Amos did see. Lift up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. God says, I have com commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that will rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of kingdoms of nations gathered together. And the Lord of hosts, he's the one that has mustered this host for the battle. God has his angels' armies. He is God. There is will is going to be done. Amen. And it says, how you for the day of the Lord is at hand and it will come as a destruction from the almighty. Therefore shall all hands will be faint. And every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid, and pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them, and they shall be in pain as a woman that travails. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as a flame. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinner's thereof out of it so this is part of the reason that we believe that we're going to be gone when these things happen so we're not going to have to witness these uh, devastations but there is going to be a judgment on the sinners and the stars of heaven and the constellations will not give their light the the sun will be darkened and it's going forth and the and the moon will not cause her light to shine and i will punish the world for their evil the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud ones to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make man more precious than fine gold, even a man with the golden wedge of Ophar. Therefore, I, I, God himself, will shake the heavens and the earth and remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in that day of his fierce anger. And, and so there's a lot of things that were going to happen. And it says, verse 19, And Babylon and the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans, the excellency, shall be as when God will overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah. And it will never be inhabited again. And so this is the end of Babel, the Babylonian, uh, at the end of the reign of the demonic. It will be overtaken. And we've got to continue to stand and believe, amen, for what God's going to do in the earth. He's going to do it. And, 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 and we want, we declare these words. We know you're going to do this, Lord. We see this in your word. It was prophesied by Isaiah. And, and, and I, I, I know this word as we release it, it is going to come to pass. But it may not be when we're here. See, the word, when it is preached, it continues to go forth. It is a sure word, and it is still in the atmosphere. And our people, us, are to preach the word of the Lord and to declare his doings. Declare these words. He is going to do this. I pray that we're going to be gone and in heaven when this happens. But there's going to be some situations that are going to be so, so uh, stunning, so horrific that we are, we've never seen it in our life. We've seen things, but it's, this is when, when God comes and he's sending his angels to do this work. And I can parallel or we could go into book of revelations and talk about like uh, similar passages where it talks about this and picks up the same theme in revelation. But again, I believe that this point with that, that this judgment is going to happen and it's going to come also and Lucifer will be thrown back in. He will be thrown into the lake of fire, right? Where he will ever, forever live in that lake of fire. So let's go on here um, to chapter 14. It says that in that day, verse three, in that day, it says, 
uh, it says in that day, verse three, that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage which you have been made to serve. So every one of us that have been suffering under the bondage of the attacks of Lucifer and the attacks of the demonic, come on, there is going to be a day where we are all going to be set free totally. And, and I believe, um, you know, it may be in heaven, but I believe we are free today, but we are being set free. We have to take our authority and resist the works of the devil because he's always coming to kill, rob, and destroy something out of your life, okay? And it says um, in verse uh, in verse chapter uh Four, it said, verse 4, it says, that thou take up this proverb, now take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city has ceased. The Lord has broken the shaft, the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the ruler. So he wants you to say, he is doing this. He is going, you take this Laman up. You take this, these sayings up. He is going to do this. Amen. The Lord is going to break the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. And he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is now persecuted and none hideth or hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet and they break forth into singing. Yes, the fir tree will rejoice also at thee, the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is coming up against us ever again. And hell has now moved from beneath, and is moved to meet them. And, uh, and when this destruction, hell is going to come up, and it's going to meet, uh, meet thee in thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It is raised up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also thus become as weak as we are? Art thou become, you become just like us. Lucifer is going to become just like all those that have died and gone to hell, right? Thy pomp is being to be brought down to the grave. Thy noise of thy vials and the worm is spread under thee and the worms will cover thee. How art thou are going to be fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou going to be cut down to the earth which did weaken the nations? Oh, thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend. What did he say? That's what brought Satan down. I will ascend. I will ascend up into the throne. Because you said, um, as you said in your heart, I will descend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down. You don't say you are that God of God. You are over God. You don't say these are the I wills. This is what dev the devil said. I will do these. I will. Oh, guess what? And God said, no, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. And so this is where it is. It says, um, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell in the sides of the pit. They that see thee, we're going to see that they're going to marvel at and, and look at you and consider, is this, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? We're going to look and say, this, what, this, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the houses of the prisoners? All the kings and of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But you will be cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, an abominable branch, not the branch of the Lord, but an abominable branch as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under foot. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because you 
have destroyed the land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall they shall never be renowned. Isn't that the seed of evildoers will never be renowned? I don't care what you think people are getting away with. I don't think care what you think of this evil that you're moved by the evil. God has his day. Amen. And it is called the day of the Lord. Amen. And all of us that are uh, all all that are incensed against the Lord, they are going to fall. Amen. So it says, prepare the slaughter. Prepare the slaughter for the iniquity of their fathers than they that do not rise and possess the land nor fill it with the face of the world. For I will rise up against them, says the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and their remnant. And the son and nephew, says the Lord. I will also make it a possession of bittern and pools of water. I will sweep it with the bazam of dest destruction, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed it, so it shall stand that I will break the Assyrians in my land and upon my mountain. I will tread them underfoot. Hallelujah. Amen. And hallelujah, tread them underfoot. Thank you, Jesus. And then shall his yoke depart from off of them and his burden will depart from off their shoulders. This is, again, the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched forth out of all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed who shall disannul and his hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? I had a, a vision. You don't know, but I had a vision as we were praying last month. And I saw the hand of the Lord. I saw the hand of the Lord with a sledgehammer. I saw the hand of the Lord breaking chains off of people, breaking chains, destroying chains. I've never seen the hand of the Lord come down like that. It was, and, and I didn't even realize that I knew that it was in, I didn't, I studied some of the hand of the Lord, but this is talking about his hand is coming down. Hallelujah. His hand is not us doing it. It is us declaring that he will do it. Amen. Let's just read this again. Thank you, Jesus. This is the purpose that is purposed on the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out among all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed who shall stop it or disannul it. His hand has been stretched out. And who is going to be able to turn it back? I tell you, the hand of the Lord is moving right now. Amen. The hand of the Lord is moving across the land. The hand of the Lord is moving across the earth and the nations of the earth. I'm expecting it. Amen. I'm expecting. I see it. It is moving. I've seen it in the spirit. Amen. He's showing us his, his hand moving. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready to see what the Lord is going to do. Now he, now Babylon fell many years ago, but there is a Babylonian system. That's the money method of, of, of increase, the Babylonian system and the money. And we have, I have to oper operate through this monetary, monetary system. But as people, we have to operate in the higher, the, uh, the, um, the ancient coin of the faith of God. Amen. And that is what the currency is that we have to operate in this hour, continuing to stand in faith, knowing that this, uh, that Luc uh, Lucifer's end is sh lease is short. It's short in the earth. There's not many, many, much time yet before he's going to be totally overthrown. But we have to declare, we have to believe, we have to receive it, and we have to declare the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that this word is true. Thank you, Lord, that this word will not return back to you empty. But it is going to prosper in the thing to which you purposed it to come to pass, just as you said here in this word. For the Lord of hosts, the angels, Lord of captains of angels' armies, has purposed who shall stop it, and his hand is stretched out, 
and who shall turn it back? I tell you, get ready, get ready. We are going to see things change in nations. We are going to see, because first the blade, then the ear, and then the full, uh, full corn. We are going to see these nations. We're going to see Haiti, Haiti turned around. We're going to see these nations that have bowed their knee to, uh, knee to Satan. They're going to come down. We're going to see, um, great strategies come down. The great, great hierarchies come down, and it is not us. It is the Lord of hosts, these mighty ones that he is sending forth, these angels, hallelujah, that are going to go forth and do this work in Jesus' name. Our part is to stay in faith, to believe, to get our words aligned up with what God's word says, and to expect. He He is the one, you know, he is the one, um, He's the one that redeems us. He's the one we're waiting for. Amen. He, there's an old song that says, you're the one we've been waiting for. Yes, you're the one. We, that's what we'll say. You are the one that we've been waiting Because he's the one that we're waiting for. It's not silver, gold, or houses, or lands, or even though we have those things. It is him himself that when when we get to meet him and he comes to, to get us, hallelujah, he's the one we've been waiting for. Is he the one you've been waiting for? Well, he is a faithful high priest over your house. He is the lover of your soul. I tell you, he is your husband, it says in Isaiah 54. For he is your husband, God, and he is your redeemer. Amen. Look to him. Call upon him. If you haven't called upon Jesus today, today's a great day to get born again and come into the kingdom of God. Amen. Come into, it's wonderful. It's called filled with joy. Amen. It's called, there's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost, in the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part? Because in him, in Jehovah, everything, in Jesus Christ, everything is yes and amen. He is our salvation. His name is Jehovah. That means he's our peace. That means he's our righteousness. That means he's our provision. Amen. That means he's our health. Amen. That means he's our shepherd. That means he's our God of recompense. Amen. He's our righteousness. Amen. He is, he is all that is contained in Isaiah 53. He is, he is our redeeming, our redeemer and our redemption. Amen. So call upon the name of the Lord today and I know he'll save you out of whatever situation you need help from. Thank you for being with me. God bless. I'll be back with you tomorrow and we'll do some more of Isaiah. Thank you for being with me. God bless you.